Hello and welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Chiropractor. It's your host, Patrick Cog, and we've got a, a, a slightly different guest today uh, because I've decided to change the profession up today. So this next gentleman that we're talking to today is actually an acupuncturist. So he studied up in Dublin. He did a three-year diploma up in Dublin and then decided to do a six-week placement over in China to actually learn a little bit more about traditional acupuncture. Uh, his main interests are obviously working in pain management and athletic performance. Is born and bred, grown, studied and continued to live and practice in Dublin, which he's now practiced in for the last five years. And he lives there with his, his, his lovely wife, his son and his two dogs. And it is Darren O'Rourke. Welcome to the show. How you doing, Patrick? Thank you very I, much. I, I hope even after I just discussed that with you that I didn't butcher your name too bad. No, it was perfect. And what an intro. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. So look, um, I know that obviously we've had a short, brief discussion about everything prior to jumping onto this, but maybe you can just introduce yourself a little bit more and maybe fill in some of the gaps that I've kind of missed out and as to why you became an acupuncturist. Absolutely, yeah. As, as you introduced, my name is Darren O'Rourke. I'm an acupuncturist. I live in Dublin, Ireland. My background is very much sport-based. So I was, from the time I was young, I was big into soccer, as we call it here, football. Okay. <laughs> in, into Irish Gaelic football, hurling martial arts and boxing so I've done it all my whole week was packed from one training session to the next um, and it was all pretty decent level so obviously over the years putting the body through all that I had quite a few lumps and smacks so I had to go and get treatment every now and then especially with martial arts they're getting our throws I used were the quite, as well yeah they were doing the throws are quite harsh and at that time, you had no matting, so you were getting thrown onto wooden floors. <laughs> so every, every couple of months, the back would be in bits. Um, I had one particular injury that I had been to a couple of different massage therapists, physical therapists, and I wasn't really getting anywhere. So a guy that I trained with was actually in his third year of studying acupuncture, and he wanted to use me as a case study. So... He treated me with acupuncture for, for this particular back issue. And the difference it made, it, it, it was like a light bulb went off my head. I was like, oh, what's, what is this? I, I need to know more. <laughs> How can a little needle provoke such a huge change within my body to cause me just to be like, the pain was gone pretty much within a couple of days, but I began seeing other benefits, like sleep was getting better, felt more restful. And as the treatments went on, I was even getting more flexibility through training. It was, it was really, it was very, very intriguing. It was just, it was like a light bulb moment. I just had to, had to know more. Mm. Mm. So really after that, we went on. And it was a few years later that I actually got into it myself because at the time, I, I was actually I was an electrician, so I okay. began an electrical, an electrical trade when I was sixteen, and then I was twenty five, I believe, when I actually took the dive and decided to go back to college to <laughs> to study some more. Amazing, amazing! And then, obviously, like you say, you now you now study in uh, sorry, don't study. You now work in Dublin, which is where you've been working for the last five years. And uh, we, we discussed just before we jumped on, so you're working in more of like a, an orthopedic and like neurological way. So maybe not so much of the traditional acupuncture way. So obviously the majority of our listeners are chiropractic patients. So maybe you can start to just, maybe just describe some of the factors of acupuncture, maybe a little bit of a brief description of how it actually works and maybe the differences between traditional Chinese acupuncture and some of the other different versions of acupuncture that are available. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I really don't think there's that many differences. So in the mechanisms that we invoke and influence are all the same because we're always sticking, whether it's a needle or whatever we're doing, we're stimulating the same human anatomy. So 
the body is the same. I think what has happened with acupuncture through the years, the language hasn't changed through the true times. And we're kind of stuck with that old rhetoric that we're, we're stimulating chi and we're moving energy through the body. I'm not saying that's not happening, but we know that all of the acupuncture meridians are very, it's almost like a, if you stick a map down of the nervous system, put the meridians over, they're very, very similar. But when we think back to three, three and a half thousand years ago was when these meridians were actually mapped out for the first time. Mm. We didn't have the language of the nervous system. We didn't know what it was. And over time, with that change in language, I think something has become lost or whether it's true tradition, keeping it as it is to respect traditions, or I, I don't know what it may be, but like everything we do with acupuncture can be explained through neurophysiology. Pretty you much the same as chiropractic. Yeah, absolutely. Neuro, it's neurophysiology. Yeah, we once we break it down, we've also like there's a lot of research that shows this, and that's especially when it comes to the mapping in the brain. So we know, for example, if somebody has chronic pain, we begin to see changes in the brain. Mm -hmm. We know that with acupuncture, this has been seen through functional MRIs that we can begin to actually re-educate and remap the brain back to what would be considered normal or a, into a better functional state and hence then pain suddenly mm. falls away or fades into the past. Mm. And it's really interesting because obviously it's the same kinds of principles that we obviously have with chiropractic. It's almost exactly the same. Um, and it's really interesting what you said about the, the meridians mapping over on the nerve system. Because actually, when you look at Reiki as an yeah. art as well, it's very interesting. You kind of look at the different chakras. And when you look at the different chakras in Reiki, it seems to represent different points in the spine and the nerve system. And when you look at those different areas, like the stomach chakras and the sacral chakras, it actually represents a different kind of nerve plexi that you were just discussing yes. a second ago. And it's almost like, again, it's just really interesting to hear that kind of crossover. Uh, yeah. it's just, you, you kind of hear the same kind of principles when people talk about um, biblical literature. You know, all the religions are very different, but when you actually really kind of break them down, there are so many similarities. Absolutely. It's almost nuts that everyone's arguing about yeah. the same thing. I see they're arguing about the same thing. Absolutely. A fun fact, the word meridian is actually French. And so it's not even Chinese. <laughs> meridian was a term that was coined by a gentleman by the name of Georges Soli de Moron. He was a, a French banker that moved to China back a few hundred years ago. And oh no, sorry, it'd be within the last hundred years because he only passed away there within the last 10 years. Um, but George Solida Moran was a huge advocate of Ayurvedic medicine. Mm -hmm. And he was the man that actually brought acupuncture to the, to the West. Amazing. Super interesting already. So look, I, I want to know, I want to know, uh, tell me some of the like, most common things, some of the most common things that maybe you treat or some of the most common things that you usually walk into your office. And then maybe some of the most unusual things that you've had walk into your office that you've seen have a benefit with acupuncture. Yeah. Um, I might go for an unusual one first because this is fresh in my mind. I literally only got this text message this morning. Um, I had a, a lady that comes to me quite regularly for, normally for knee pain or back pain. She's a CrossFitter, um, super fit big into self-care um, but she had COVID recently mm. so since and since the smell has went and her taste had went so she's been COVID free for about four weeks now mm -hmm. but I treated her last week mm -hmm. for the first time since prior to that and um, everything was all clear it was safe to do so but she texted me this morning saying that over the last week her sense of smell and taste is back and she's like 
it had to be what you do. Now we did treat the sinuses um, and the lungs through them what would be considered traditional acupuncture. Um, but that was unusual. That wasn't something I wasn't expected. And she was, you know, you should write up a blog about it or do a post. Like, like, you can't. That's anecdotal. I've one person. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. we can't go proclaiming this to be great. Yeah, we don't, and we don't always necessarily understand why these things happen. Because I had mm. something very similar happen. It wasn't COVID, uh, but I had a gentleman who is an ex-army veteran mm. and he's been having tinnitus for we don't know how long yeah. and his tinnitus disappeared and that's actually the second time in my practice that a patient is coming with tinnitus and tinnitus has disappeared but i wasn't expecting that in fact i didn't even know he had tinnitus yeah i didn't even know about it it wasn't something that he'd even mentioned to me but when he came in for his progress exam he put on his form oh yeah my back pain's better my headaches are better also my tinnitus has disappeared and we don't necessarily always understand why but it's like you were saying earlier it's that neurophysiological change and you can't necessarily always predict how or why yeah 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 no and that's excellent isn't it because we have these i always ref, like generally if somebody comes in and we're having a conversation and they're, they're asking can i help and i'm sure you see this yourself they list off of back pain headaches poor sleep digestion's very poor um can't walk too long get very fatigued it, there's always a, a whole array of things and the way i kind of term it is right i know for pretty certain we can help you with the back pain the pain issues um but we also have a lot of secondary benefits to acupuncture you we always see your, your sleep will improve your digestion will improve fatigue will get better and you'll become more active so it, it's great that we have those secondary benefits available to us we they may not be our primary targets but mm -hmm. as the body is returning back to a more natural functional state and i'm sure we could dive into that later but what i would like to know is obviously you told me what your kind of peculiar case was but what would be more traditional what you would treat Back pain, neck pain, knee pain, it, it, it's predominantly those issues. So headaches, neck, shoulders, backs, knees. <laughs> um, All the good uh, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I work with quite a lot of professional athletes, footballers and fighters, a lot of fighters. Um, so with those guys, we're, we're more so going through some functional testing, making sure they're, they're firing off all cylinders as they go in into battle, as we like to say, to give them the best chance because quite often dysfunction comes along before pain, as we know, and pain is not always a predictor as to function. So we, initially they, they, they only came in for pain after having that conversation and them realizing that it's as much about having their body working properly mm. as well as their nutrition, their training, their sleep. Mm. They began coming in more routinely. Mm. And when you go through the functional tests, all, all orthopedic type stuff, um, you can see that there's areas that aren't fully functional. There's inhibition in specific tissues that may be affected, maybe from repetitive strain. It may be from <laughs> blocking kicks or getting hit time over time mm. but once we have that cut early we can begin to correct yeah and change the direction of the path mm. on the lead into their next full competition yeah it's, it's it's really interesting because um there's a chiropractor in in our circle uh his name's Ulrich sandstrom and he works with leicester rugby club and he, you know he's he's the same he'll he'll manage people way before the injuries start and he uses functional muscle testing and stuff like that and then you know, you've got people like usain bolt who will not get on the racetrack until they've had their chiropractic adjustment and he yeah. always he's the guy that always says well you know this is this is my cutting edge performance 
And a lot of the time, you know, you look at a lot of athletes, they do, they have a form of therapy that they use for functional enhancement. But when you look at it and based on the conversations, we're using different mechanisms, but we're aiming for the same outcome, which is enhanced neurological or muscle or tissue function. Doesn't matter what it is, it's tissue function because function is like you say, it's the prerequisite. And I'm I, I want to say it's AC Milan. They they have a chiropractor that does a lot of functional neurology neurology. And they'll look at stuff like standing balance tests and coordination-based tests. And there's nothing to do with necessarily range of motion or pain, but they'll use these that is to do with this part of the brain called the cerebellum, uh, to do with balance and coordination. And they'll use these cerebellar based tests to predict whether these for players are at high or low risk of injury. And from what I was aware, and I don't know what the statistics are now, but AC Milan used to be one of the oldest football clubs in the league. And they had one of the lowest injury rates. Yeah. Which is really ironic. Dr. Because... Mark Ray, is it? There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've taken his courses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So interesting stuff interesting stuff and again it's yeah. like yeah. i say it's prevention rather than cure absolutely it's uh, whenever we're talking to people and they're asking about how often should we come back or especially again yeah, athletes with function they're training twice a day every day and i always try take it to somewhere that they might understand a little bit more so if if you bought a porsche or a ferrari you had that investment, you put it into a, the car of your dreams. How regularly would you get that service to maintain? You know, and w- would you put the worst parts in it just to keep it going? And every time you say that, they kind of go, yeah, no, well, I can't just take my shoulder off, put a new shoulder on, or yeah. I'm, I'm racking the mileage up on this body. I've got to look after it. And you got to put the good oil in, not the cheap oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So look, I, I think you've given us some really nice insights as to kind of what acupuncture is and some of the things that it can it can manage. <clears throat> However, obviously, what I'm very fully aware of with pretty much all uh, practitioners, uh, they seem to be particularly good at looking after themselves. Now, obviously, we've seen for one, you uh, you've got quite an extensive history or different sports and stuff that you take part in. So I'm going to guess you're very physically active. If not now, definitely was in the past. But maybe you could uh, maybe you could give us some of the stuff that you do to look after yourself. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I, I'm not nowhere near as active as I used to be or as I should be. Um, <laughs> but I, I've kind of prioritised my family and business at the moment ahead of my own health, but that's taken a, a flip back the opposite way around now this year. Um, so for the last few years, I, I was folk, I was managing my son's football team, um, looking after the wife, the dogs. So my own training was kind of put in the background and that was something I always had envisaged from the time the young lad was going to be at a certain age because I'm fully aware that there's only so many years before he will be saying no dad leave me alone <laughs> don't come near me I've had enough <laughs> I'm going out with my friends so I wanted to try and prioritize and opt- optimize the time I spent with him and through these years and um, but every morning I'll, I'll get out I'll go for a walk down the beach I live not too far away from a very beautiful beach here in Dublin called Diamond Beach so this morning half seven myself the dogs were out down there just taking in the fresh air out for a walk feet into the water it was lovely nice I can I ask do you, do you get acupuncture done for yourself I do yes I, I get acupuncture and I also get chiropractic adjustments as well. I just, I, at least every month I'll get an adjustment and probably twice a month, every fortnight I'll, I'll get acupuncture. And if needs be, if anything else props up in between, then I'll go get sorted, definitely. Amazing. So look, it's interesting to see. So look, he's an acupuncturist, but 
is actually dipping into other i'm exactly the same by the way so yeah. i don't just get chiropractic mm. care I, I see a sports massage therapist i have uh functional pt training as well yeah. so it, it but this is the thing right is a lot of people think that it's a one-stop shop and that one person should be able to provide everything but yeah. when you when we don't ever think about this but when you get an electrician into your house you don't then start asking them how do they fix the boiler or how like you don't get the electrician to then do the plumbing and then you don't get the tiler to do the carpet you just it's not how it's done and so we you yeah. know we've, we've got different niches and a lot of the time a lot of the time you can benefit from different areas but it's always best to have the professional in that area absolutely even within the realms of medicine we have the same thing doctors go into their own fields and they niche out mm. like you'll see it from time to time again you know? no no your gp will refer you out to someone else for x y or z and if, even if that person thinks it's not within his scope he'll refer you on amazing look i've got I've got another question for you so Obviously, there's a lot of people that probably haven't, uh, they're, they're obviously suffering with a lot of problems. And so the purpose, obviously, of this podcast is to try and instill some health benefits for people and give them some ideas on and, and some inspiration as to how they can actually take care of themselves. So maybe like you've got some tips or hints as an acupuncturist from an acupuncturist point of view as to some ways that someone could potentially benefit themselves or do something that could help them today. Yeah, definitely. Um I'm a huge proponent that we're all overly stressed right now. And like, even outside of this whole pandemic and COVID, we've just been walking around chronically stressed for years. I think if we can learn to let go of all of these little bitty things that we tend to hold on and build up over time, I think Breathing is a great way to do that. So you're able to slow your breath right down. Breathe into the diaphragm. Just exhale, let a big sigh out. But repeatedly do it over time. time. Give yourself the time to sit down with yourself. Do that. And allow yourself to empty your mind. I think it goes a very long way. I think it's completely underestimated. Mm. Well, it's it's interesting because obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of courses coming out in breathwork now. Yeah, and it's one of the most simple things. And if, in fact, it actually, you know, mm. I've got I've got colleagues that I went to school with that are now running courses in breathwork. Yeah, uh, you know, I, my my functional personal trainer is he always overemphasizes breathwork. You've got courses like Wim Hof that have become all the rage nowadays meditation a lot of the grounding on meditation is breath work and actually interestingly i constantly get an advert for this come up on youtube whenever i'm streaming my meditation tapes is there's now even apparatus to try and help you control your breathing that you like you blow through like a whistle without it being whistle. i don't even know how it works but there yeah. are these there are these things that try to make you focus on the breath to bring in that kind of grounding or anti-stress release. But you know, right. one thing that we know that the breath is linked to, same again with stuff like heart rate, but slowing your breathing down definitely seems to trigger a shift in the way that our brain and our nerve system works. Absolutely. And that's the reason why it gives you that calming effect because you've gone from a state of arousal, like you said, stress, down into a state of parasympathetic tone, rest, which is, you know, the same kind of thing, by the way, we do, I'm, I'm going to assume, because I'm not an acupuncturist, but I'm going to assume that when you do a lot of the work on the body and it starts to relax stuff like the muscles and take the tone down in the nerves, same kind of process as what it is with adjusting and massages and physical therapy, that we're bringing someone into a more of a state of parasympathetic tone as well, as a byproduct. Definitely. Definitely. And I, I think it actually plays... A bigger role than we give a credit for in bringing a person back towards their, their healthier selves and but it's actually great now with all of the the wearables and 
everything else because when people have them on, they can actually see where a heart rate has dropped through the treatment process. Mm-hmm. We, 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 you could always know from looking at them because generally you get a lot of burping or people pass away and as everything begins to relax. Um, but like with the wearables, it's it's great because you you can actually see at the point where that shift happens, mm-hmm. which is it's amazing to be able to actually see it. You can even buy the the apps with the monitors now, can't you? As well, which uh, I, th- I believe it's called HeartMath. It yeah. works out something called heart rate variability, which is it is an interesting one because heart rate variability is being studied quite a lot, not obviously yeah. in a lot of different therapies. But it's a it's a good way of me- measuring parasympathetic tone. Mm-hmm. How quickly, when you're in a state of arousal or stress, can you bring your body back to relaxation? And what they found is, a lot, obviously, a lot of people like the monks and and people that have done a lot of meditation and mindfulness, or they've gone through a lot of therapy, or the people that are just very grounded and happy generally have a much lower fluctuation in their heart variability. They call it heart coherence. Being in uh, incoherence is allowing for you to control that that variability. There's not like sporadic beats. And actually interesting, they talk about this. I don't know whether you've watched it, Darren. There's a really good documentary on Netflix called Heal. And they talk about this in that documentary about heart coherence. And actually it's been presented to me in a number of seminars over the last five to 10 years because it's a measurable thing. It's a way of tapping in and measuring the nerve system without sticking a load of spinal probes in. You don't have to put, you don't, it's non-invasive, but stuff like cardiac output and breathing rate are all controlled by that central nervous system. Yeah, absolutely. Really interesting. So like you say, you, you, you said you actually in the sessions with someone, you can actually see a shift in that parasympathetic tone. Yeah. You'll often hear their whole digestive system just, They'll begin rumbling and every now and then you might get a, a belch or something just and they go, uh, you're hungry? No, 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 but just let it go. Just feel ah yeah. It's a journey what you I feel ah interestingly, how long how long would the, something like that actually take an acupuncture light? So your needles go in, how long would it take for something like a release like that to take place? It, it allows it will be very from person to person on average what i see it'd be somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes depending on person mm. so with acupuncture as well we can we can excite the system depending mm. on how long we leave needles in or we can decrease the system so if we want to excite something then we will needle for less amount of time if we want to decrease tone we leave needles in longer very interesting so i just want to move on just because i'm obviously wary about your time uh so being being that you've obviously now been in practice for five years uh obviously me and darren met through our mental mentorship group and so i know that obviously darren is very much looking obviously into personal growth and development and so something that i love with people that love personal development and personal growth we're very good at reflecting, very good at reflecting or looking back. Now, interestingly, I always say there's never regrets. There's only lessons. Uh, but maybe you could maybe you could give us like a, something that you would tell yourself if you could go back five to 10 years from where you are now and you could give yourself one piece of advice, either a health piece of advice or business piece, it's something that you think would really help you in life. What would that piece of advice be? Um. I think it would be not to be as reserved and to actually make that step sooner instead of thinking about it. So quite often I would have been the person that would think about something for two days before I made a decision. (laughs) Trying to calculate and see where it might lead me instead of just following that gut feeling um, over the last while I began doing following the gut and it's taken me to places in a much more efficient amount of time than trying to calculate everything and <laughs> move logically through yeah so not like me <laughs> it's very impulsive <laughs> no, no calculation whatsoever 
But that's how we learn, right? That's how we learn. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's, it's an interesting, it's a saying that uh, now that you've obviously been with Ryan for a little bit, you're sure you probably would have heard him say at some point, you have to fail fast. Yeah. You have to Absolutely. fail fast because yeah. inevitably at some point, every single person is going to fail. And yeah. it's not the failures that define you. It's how you bring yourself back from those failures, but also it's how you learn. You know, I think Einstein said it isn't the sign of insanity, trying to do the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. But also yeah. you're never going to get there if you don't ever try it. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and a lot of people, they want everything to be perfect. But if you're mm -hmm. not ever, if you're not ever embarrassed about the first time you ever did something, you haven't learned fast enough. Yeah, you haven't. Absolutely. So that first time that you ever see a video of you doing a squat in the gym, you're thinking, oh, I did a great squat. And you look at the form like six months later and you go, oh, what was I doing? <laughs> or you go into the gym and you can only, you know, pick up the five kilo dumbbells. And then six months later, you're doing 20 kilo dumbbells. And you go, what yeah. was I doing when I first went into the gym? Like how? So I think that's really interesting because, you know, a lot of people are procrastinators. And Absolutely. I always say that procrastination is one of the biggest killers of creativity. Yeah, definitely. Because when we think about it, and the, and ironically, the more you think about it, the more reasons you may give yourself for, but also normally it's the more reasons you give yourself to come out of what yes. you actually want to do. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're over-rationalizing to find an out. So did you, interestingly, based on that that topic that you just basically said there, did you go straight into setting up your own practice or did you work for another acupuncturist before you set up on your own? No, I went straight into my own practice. I've actually, I've been practicing five years in my own practice now over the last four. I, I was very lucky that I had a, had a friend that I used to train with and he allowed me to use his clinic for the first year on like a percentage rate. So if I seen somebody, I gave them a percentage of that, that earning. Um, but he, it was a blessing because he helped guide me. He's, he's actually been a, a secret mentor in the background and he's helped me a lot. Normally without even knowing. Yeah, so I'm truly grateful to, to have him as, as a friend and being able to lean on him when needed. Amazing. So look, Darren, I, I'd love to ask. So there may be people that have listened to this podcast that have been really interested about some of the topics or discussions that we've actually had. And maybe they want to learn a little bit more about acupuncture, or maybe they just want to know a little bit more about you, or they want to be able to get in touch with you or see some of the stuff that you do or some of the work that you're doing. What, what are some of the ways that people can find out a little bit more about you? Maybe they can find out a little bit more about your practice or some stuff like What's, what your, what's your clinic name on Facebook or what's your website and stuff? And then we can attach all of these in the description below. Yeah, absolutely. Um, best way to actually see what goes on behind the doors is Instagram and Facebook. Um, on Facebook, we are Physicare Body Walk Therapy. And on Instagram, it's a little different. We are Physicare Integrated Health. Oh no, sorry, Physicare Dublin. Physicare underscore Dublin on Instagram is the handle. Mm -hmm. um, and the website is www.physicare.ie. Yeah, because we're in weird, 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 <laughs> weird URLs <laughs> because uh, you just like to be about unique. To ask, huh? Could you, I was about to ask, could you understand me? <laughs> yeah, I was, well, to be honest, our website's dot clinic. So we've, yeah. got a weird, we've got a weird URL as well because .coms and .co.uk seem to be uh, now the domains that are taken a lot. So they're starting to add new domains. So yeah. that was great. And it actually, I quite like it. Completehealth.clinic sounds quite quirky. Yeah, absolutely. It's very different. It's it stands out. Yeah, it's rememberable because it's different to everything else. Yeah. So, cool. So we'll make sure that we add stuff like the description. We'll add his uh, his email and his Facebook name and his Instagram pet name. And we'll probably put stuff like his email or anything in there as well uh, so that you guys can get in contact with Darren if you want to. So, Darren, I've got one last question for you. Shoot. And I <laughs> shoot it away. <laughs> so I call this one the wow question. And uh, the reason why I call it the wild question, it's an acronym for words of wisdom. 
So maybe you can give us one kind of like last parting piece of advice, or maybe you have a mantra or a saying that you like to live your life by that you can share with our listeners as one last piece of advice. Okie doke. Um, I, I, I've got a few, but probably my favorite would be that we are the sum of all our decisions. Meaning that everything we have done has led us to where we are, whether that's a good place or a bad place. But in that same process, if we want to go somewhere different, we just have to start making different decisions. Deep. (laughs) (laughs) I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. And I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Uh, the decisions that I've made have obviously led me to being where I am now at 29. I would I yeah. tell you, I would never have guessed that I would have been where I am at 29. But like I say, it only it only took one decision to put me where I am now. Yeah. Well, actually, no, that's a lie because obviously I had to decide to go to chiropractic school. But uh, yeah. you know, it's it was one of those situations where I could have procrastinated and I could have not ended up taking over the practice that I'm in now. And there would have been no way that we would have been on this podcast right now. I know. It's, so it's amazing like how, how everything kind of forms together. And once you begin to let go and succumb to that, I don't know anybody that it's served bad or has come out worse of it. What's that? By setting up their own practice? No, just, just by actually making decisions like you were talking about based on on a gut feeling or even small decisions just like if you're in a bad place you do something small that's different Mm. if that's someone that feels fatigued overweight just start walking around the block Mm. you might bump into somebody start a conversation all of a sudden you've a new friend you've someone to take that journey with you and things can just spiral and Quite often, it will lead to great places. That's the Irish charm. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 on that note, I'm going to say one last massive thank you for Darren jumping on the show with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on here. It's been Thanks really oh, absolutely really my pleasure. It's really nice it. to have something different as well. So we've had tons of chiropractors. We've had a we've had some dentists. We've had an osteopath. Uh, but you know it's nice it's always nice to get a different a, a different profession yeah. but it's like i say it's really nice to have a different profession but also just see how similar the views are yeah that, that's like yeah and just like we were saying at the start it's we've all got different ideologies our principles more often than not overlap and ultimately what we're trying to influence is that same human anatomy that is in front of you improved and health bring them out on the better side of whatever it is that they're struggling with you got it you got it and we'll fight about it <laughs> so we're all fighting about what we're doing and we're all doing the same thing i, I the irony of the world how yeah. how it is how ironic anyway like i say a huge thank you for jumping on with me i just want to say a massive appreciation uh obviously thank you for your time Uh, that's another episode of coffee with a chiropractor with your host patrick hogg thank you so much darren for jumping on the show and we'll speak to you again soon (laughs) have a great day bye-bye